let us look at this question <clears throat> uh, where you have to solve uh, this equation which is solve 2z square plus 6z plus 11 is equal to 0 expresses solutions in the simplest form of this so what they're trying to do is they don't want you to use the calculator graphic calculator you can do this on a graphic calculator but they want you to write in this form so your gal uh, calculator goes out of the way so let's look at this so we're using completing square the method of completing the square you may be aware of the completing the square what completing the square in the method of completing the square we make it we make this in a perfect square so i'll explain what i mean so let me write the equation again so it is 2 z squared plus 6 z plus 11 is equal to 0. to make it a perfect square i need to remove this coefficient of 2 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide this by 2 this by 2 the whole thing by 2. so this becomes z squared plus 3z plus 11 over 2 is equal to 0. Now the next step I'm going to write like this. z squared plus 3z. I'll leave some space here. Is equal to minus 11 over 2. I have taken away 11 over 2 on both sides. Now to make this a complete square, what you do is you do the half of this and then square this that will become a perfect square. Suppose I'll explain a perfect square. So x squared plus 4x plus 4 is called a perfect square. Hmm? Why? Because half of 4 is 2. Because this, I hope you understand, this is x plus 2, the whole square. That's why it's called a perfect square. So half of 4 is 2 and 2 squared is 4. Let me give you one more example. Suppose x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 0, which is x plus 5, the whole squared. Now, if you look at 25 and 10, half of 10 is 5, and square of 10 is 25. Okay, let me do one more example with the minus sign. So, if it is x squared minus 6x plus 9 equal to 0, again, this is a perfect square of x minus 3 squared, which is 0. So, again, what is half of negative 6? is negative 3 and square of negative 3 is 9 plus 9. So what you do is half of 3 is 1.5 so I'll write 3 over 2 squared here. So if I write 3 over 2 squared I'll write 3 over 2 squared which is 9 over 4. Okay so I'm adding 9 over 4 on both sides. So this becomes z plus 3 over 2 the whole squared is equal to this will become minus 22 over 4 plus 9 over 4 okay and minus 22 plus 9 is minus 13 over 4 so this becomes z plus 3 over 2 the whole squared is minus 13 over 4 is nothing but 13 over 4 i squared Okay, now again, those who don't know, you should be knowing this as a calculus student. So, i, by definition, is square root of negative 1. So, i squared is negative 1. Okay, so this is basically from this definition. So, in place of negative 1, I have put i squared. Okay, so now, if I can say z plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus square root of 13 over 2i this i'm writing z plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus half times root 13 i so finally z is equal to minus 3 over 2 plus or minus one half times square root of 13 i okay and this is in which form the form that they are asking us this and this form are the same so let me write that form z is equal to a plus or minus b root ci so 
So they want us to write in this form z is equal to a plus or minus b root c i. So if you compare this with this, what is your a? a is nothing but minus 3 over 2 or minus 1.5. What's your b? b is nothing but half which is 0 0.5 and c is nothing but 13. And that's what we got. a, b, c are rational numbers. Okay? And these are rational numbers. See you in the next